All right, well, welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project. And I think we'll call this a... <laughs> so, um, the uh, system uh, went down. I, uh, I was editing the closeout for the first week in May and I was going through some numbers and noticed that the uh, system wasn't producing solar. So I thought, well, that's odd. So I came back to the, uh, uh, to the system, see what was going on with it. And when I got here, the inverter, it was totally dark. Everything was, everything was shut off. So I, okay, well, went and went through the positions, went and turned the PV off, went and turned the inverter off here. And then I went to cycle the breaker. And so when I went to cycle the breaker, I noticed that it was tripped. Mm, okay, well, that's interesting. So let's go ahead and see why that was. And so uh, I reset the breaker there and then energized the PV. And then finally, third step, go ahead and kick the inverter back on. Well, when I turned the inverter back on, it made a noise I've never heard an inverter make. It wasn't a crackle pop, it wasn't uh, a click, it wasn't a, it was anything that you would associate, it was a gurgle. <laughs> so I'm thinking that probably uh, uh, maybe there's a capacitor failure inside. I really don't know, I'm very interested to find out. So I gave a shot, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Sunworks to uh, uh, let them know what was going on and they're gonna get back to me and see what, uh, uh, see what they have available on their end. And the uh, reason that we're gonna call it a zombie apocalypse mode special update is that uh, something really interesting happened. Well, because the system tripped off on the solar side and the batteries were set to zero, in other words, that they will do a full discharge before taking anything from the grid, this failure has occurred completely on zombie apocalypse mode. And I currently have 69% in the system, and I have about oh, a little under 50% in the uh, in the car, 70% or so in the car, and so uh, let's go ahead and follow this to its conclusion and see if we can get through the entire repair without touching the grid. So they have you replace the switch box too, huh? They have you replace the lower switch box as well? This guy? Or do yeah, you just... No, it's just going to be a whole swap for the whole Okay, order. okay. They want the whole thing back just to make sure everything has its continuity. Okay. And we'll obviously figure out whatever that is. Okay, yeah, I thought you'd just be pulling the, pulling the thing off and separating the head box. That would save you a lot of work. It would. Oh well. No. They want it, they want it. Yeah, I was thinking you guys would be here tomorrow or something like that. It'd be a whole lot more, more exciting, right? <laughs> I saw someone, I was in a meeting and someone flashed me a flyer. I was like, oh shit. It's from the action. <laughs> <clears throat> so you can see where it charred. If you mm -hmm. look at the screws and yeah, stuff back there, yeah. you can see all the soot on top of this little coil there. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anything. Right? This is all happy. Yeah, I don't think anything there is affected. Everything, everything was looking copacetic on the on the Tesla end. It just said, "Hey, I lost. I just lost my PV power." <laughs> 
<clears throat> and then the only other topic of discussion was uh, whether or not it uh, 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 that with the system railing uh, for you know, two or three months out of the year, uh, the system the system peaks out. So I've had a guess. I would say it's probably eight one, eight two, something of that nature. Um, but uh, with, you know, is that? It doesn't seem like that would be overly hard on a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. Is it flat? Uh, yeah. And it gets the worst. The worst it gets is from it is in June, where you get about four hours of that, where from uh, 11 in the morning till two in the afternoon. Only in June. Well, it gets worse in June. <laughs> That's where it's the worst. We don't, it starts we don't, by, we don't by want it to flatline. Okay. Yeah, well, obviously, because then you're you know you're wasting power. As well. Well, it, it's what's called clipping out, and it, it adds stress. I think, uh, I think we might need a bigger inverter. Okay. And this is a 76, correct? Yep. The next one up would be a 10, I guess. Okay. So you need six hands. Um, Dude, you got 400 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to cry over that. Yeah. <laughs> so you got Not that we're using any of that. But you, you got the capacity as far as the, the rules. Uh, Please tell me how to interact with training courses. Log into your support so, group. Click on keywords. Check what you need to look at. And at this time of year, it will start to peak. I think we've been seeing some 7.6s, um, probably two, three, four days, not in a row, but but uh, up till now, maybe more than that, maybe a week, maybe a week, week or so worth of, of 7.6, where it'll hit that for a brief period of time. Oh, that's great. But but what hap but what happens now is from this time towards June, that's that's going to start getting longer and longer and longer, and so uh, uh, like I said, it peaks out in, in June, where uh, through the entire month of June. We're looking at from 11 in the morning until uh, 2 in the afternoon. Now it's thrown a few codes before before this today, right? That was that was the the power walls. Oh, we were messing with power walls. He was throwing those codes because the power air, walls were shut down. Internal and uh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, right. Because so what happens is is that if because uh, we were doing the test of the system, right? Yeah. And so several times we brought the system up to 100% with the grid shut off, and when it does that, the power walls go, eh. and so then they send a signal to the uh, um, uh, inverter that uh, kicks off the TV production, right? And so then uh, the inverse, I suppose, is also true because we've actually depleted the batteries a couple of times again just to see what uh, what they would do, and so then in bringing them back up. What happens is is that the uh, the power walls, when they come back up, they force a brief period where they uh, force the inverter to reset itself. Smart, smart actually, you know, because that way it's not it's not coming in up to anything it doesn't know, right? And so it sends a signal. It says, okay, well, if there's anything attached to me, it's going off. And so that was I thought that was a pretty interesting yeah. uh, uh, thing that they did. All right, sounds good. All right, bye. As you said, take a bunch of photos, get a serial number, uh, and they'll arm it tomorrow. Put it on. Oh yeah, they're gonna want it back and see they're probably gonna wanna see what happened with it. Do a necropsy. Yeah. Yeah. Get off, yeah. <laughs> off. Post mortem. Do you think this sent um sent any data? Not this one, but that one before it definitely blew up. Yeah, there you was. Think it I kicked it out. Uh, but Andrew said there was a few codes, but those might have been the codes that they're talking about with earlier in the, you know, when the batteries were. For the past for the past couple of months, we've been testing out the power walls, and so um, one of the things that, that people have been really interested in is, you know, the length of time that it's capable to run off grid, uh, and then also without communication, and so. When the power wall tops itself up, gets actually close. It's uh, uh, 90, somewhere between 90. It'll occur always somewhere between 95 percent and 98 percent full. It sends a signal to the inverter to shut off the PV, and so that would be received by them as a fault, mm. as a, uh, a frequency fault. And that's kind of in line with what Andrew said. Yeah. So. 
I think it was just the inverter uh, had enough. You know. Well, and again, well, you know, maybe we can look into you know whether or not it was from it peaking. Uh, you know. But again, they you know when they designed these, they designed them with a considerable amount of freeboard, so I wouldn't think that that would be too big of a deal. But, uh, but it's already gone through last all last year of it, so. <laughs> Well, that was pretty quick. We only lost a, uh, uh, a few hours uh, of, of production with that, so it went, went pretty smooth. The, uh, the section that uh, blew up in the uh, inverter uh, appears to be a, a, a little primary coil section. I'll show a picture of that here. Um, but uh, they're going to go ahead and do a diagnostic on that to determine whether or not the the fault might have been the result of railing the system. Our, our, our PV system produces, in total, if I had to guess, I would say that it peaks out somewhere around 8.1, 8.2, something of that nature. And the inverter limits us to 7.6 kilowatts. And so starting about this time of the year, we wind up hitting that peak. And it gets, it's its worst in June where you wind up hitting that peak about 11 in the morning and then it stays flat topped at 7.6 kilowatts to about 2 in the afternoon and then it starts to fall away again and so it would be nice to be able to uh, uh, upgrade to a 10 kilowatt system uh, to, to capture that uh, but uh, as we discussed before the thing that you get into there is, is that if you have too large of a system then the power that you produce on the lower end in winter the systems aren't as efficient at processing that uh, uh, that power. So when the system would produce, say, between two and four kilowatts, uh, the uh, uh, the system may not be running as efficient if it's a 10 or a 12 kilowatt system. So that's about it for this zombie apocalypse mode special update. I realized we weren't actually on zombie apocalypse mode, but it was still fun because even if they had not been able to come out today, we still would have had enough power in the battery to last us through tomorrow and even into the next day. So, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.